Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. This time I will be painting a Harlequin Solitaire for Warhammer 40k. This is my take on how to paint it and it's fairly simple. It doesn't require as many colors as other characters and the model just looks so cool. If you like this video and you would like to see others like it, please leave suggestions in the comment section below. Comments, likes and subscriptions really help my channel and they are all greatly appreciated. Let's begin. I'm going to start by priming the model in black because most of the model is very dark. For that I'm going to use Vallejo Surface Primer Black through an airbrush. You can use any other primer that you like, just uh, try to use black because that's uh, the main color. I'm going to start by painting the purple and for that I'm going to use Nagaroth Knight. This is going to be a base coat in both the light purple and dark purple. Underneath the coat and on the color of the coat and also on all of the like ribbon like like the belt and the little piece of a cloth that is touching uh, the terrain. Uh, again as any uh, other of my tutorials make sure to thin this color a little bit. Uh, purple doesn't cover that well so you're going to at least need two coats. Uh, I think I did three just to make sure you can do as many as you like. Next I'm going to use Celestra Grey and with this color I'm going to paint the face. And that's a very simple step, the same as the previous one, just make sure to thin down the color and use multiple coats so it doesn't cover the detail. And uh, I'm trying to paint the places that are uh, more underneath the, the details of the model. You, can, you have to start from the inside out, so you paint the most difficult parts to paint first and then you go uh, outwards and paint the, the things that are outside the model. Once that's done, I'm going to move on to paint the yellow. For that, I'm going to use Averland Sunset. This is a base color, so it's going to cover very well. Just make sure to thin it down a little bit. And then uh, paint. Uh, I'm going to paint the shoulder pads, the weapon. And I think that's pretty much it. Uh, if you want any other places on your Harlequins to be yellow, you can use this color as well. And if you paint on places that where you didn't want to, you can just clean up uh, easily with the other colors. Next, I'm going to use Ceres Purple, and with this color I'm going to paint the purple where I want it to be brighter. That's going to be the belt and places like that, like ribbons and things like that. You can paint it with this color completely, just to make a different shade of uh, purple. Uh, just to make it different uh, throughout the model. And this is just going to be for me on the belt and on the little piece of cloth that is touching the terrain. Next, I'm going to use Sandry Dust, and with this color I'm going to paint the horns. You can leave them gray if you want as well, and that way you don't have to buy more paints. Uh, but I decided to go with this color just to give it a little bit more color. And uh, it's just one more paint that I'm going to use. Once it's done, I'm going to paint the gold. For that, I'm going to use Retributor Armor. Just make sure to shake this uh, color well, because metallics separate a lot. So make sure to shake it uh, vigorously and then uh, start painting with it. Uh, thin it down a little bit with water and I'm going to use it to paint all of the gold details. Uh, the nails on the hand that's forwards, the gauntlet on the back and all of the, the gold details around the model that you would like to be gold, you can paint them with this color. Just make sure to be careful not to paint in the, any other areas that are already painted. Once it's done, I'm going to use Mephiston Red, and with this color I'm, I'm going to paint all of the gems and places like that on the model. And this is the last base coat that I'm going to use on this uh, uh, miniature. Uh, next is going to be just shades, and then we're going to go into highlighting. Once it's done, we've finished with all of the base coats of this model, and then I'm going to move into shading uh, all of the areas. I'm going to start with Drukai Violet. And with this color, I'm going to shade the face and all of the purple areas around the model. You can thin it down a little bit with water on the face so it's not as harsh. Or you can use it straight out of the pot. Uh, for me, it's no, it's not big difference. It's going to look a little bit more strong if you use it straight from the pot. Just make sure to shade, uh, to shake well your shade before you apply it. And on the big purple areas, try to paint it on the recesses so that you don't have to come back and clean it up. 
just uh, apply it on those areas on where you see any crevices and then that way you'll save yourself a lot of time. Next I'm going to shade the rest of the areas with Seraphim Sepia, that's really all that it's needed. We only need two shades and this is going to go over the yellow, over the gold, over the bone and the red and that's really it. Uh, try to use it on the recesses of the yellow, don't shade the whole thing because you, then you'll need to clean it up. Uh, you can do it and then clean it up if you like but it's going to take a little bit more time and that's fine but you don't really need to do that and uh, that's it. Once that's done, you don't need to do anything else. Uh, this is a very good tabletop standard. I'm going to continue highlighting with Celestric Gray. And with this color, I'm just going to bring back the gray of the face. Just uh, painting it on the highlights and leaving the recesses on the previous color. Uh, we're going to try to paint most of the places that are not in the recess. Just to bring back the gray and just leave the other parts as they are. Once that's done, I'm going to give it a final highlight with Ultra and Grey. And this is just uh, touching the tip of the nose and the top of the cheekbone and the eyebrows if you see any and all of the places that are very uh, high up. The, the lower lip, you can also paint a little line of it to make it shine a little bit more and that's it. Next, I'm going to start highlighting the dark uh, purple around the model with Sarah's purple and this is going to be a niche highlight on all of the darkest purples around the model and this is just going to try and uh, paint all of the edges with this color. Uh, just try to do as thin as a line as you like. I don't, I don't do very thin edges, I try to do them a little bit thicker just for them to show from a distance. From closer they don't look as pretty but I think uh, my models stand out a little bit more if you can see the highlights from far away. I guess if I was going for a competition uh, painting style you would need to go with a lot thinner highlights but this is the way I do it. Next I'm going to use Jean Stiller purple and with this color I'm going to uh, give an extreme highlight on the dark areas of the purple. And uh, this is just going to go on the very sharpest edges, uh, on the very corners, just do a little, little lines near the corners and the sharpest edges of the dark purple. And in the lighter purple, I'm going to use this color on all of the edges uh, to give it a, a highlight like we did on the darker uh, purple in the previous step. Once it's done, I'm going to finish up the purple with the color lilac. Uh, you can do a little dot of this on the darker purple on the very sh uh, corners just to make them stand up a little bit more but I'm going to use it just on the lighter purple and I'm going to paint on the very edges on the places that are sharpest and the corners just to make them stand out a little bit more make them look, look a little sharper and a little brighter. Once the purple is done, I'm going to move on to paint the black of the robe. For that, I'm going to use Dark Reaper. I'm going to try and do a bluer uh, highlights, blue highlights on the coat and gray highlights on the other blacks, just to make them different blacks, they give the illusion that there are different uh, blacks. One being very cool and the other one being uh, kind of normal. And this is going to go on all of the edges and I'm not going to worry to do a, a start with a very thin edge highlight because we're going to use two more highlights I think and uh, just to make them this edges really really bright and really stand out and be uh, a little different. Next I'm going to build up this highlight with Thunderhawk Blue. And with this color I'm going to do exactly the same thing, just trying to do a thinner highlight inside of the Dark Reaper so that it looks as a transition of color that's moving from lightest to dark into the black. And this is going to go on all of the same places, just try to do a thinner highlight on all those edges and all over the same places and leaving a little bit of the other color behind. Once it's done, I'm going to use Fenrisian Grey and this color is just going to make these colors pop a lot. So you don't really need a lot of it, but you need to use it on the brightest parts, on the folds and on the sharpest corners, just to make them stand out. Try to do a thin highlight so the other two colors show. Uh, don't try to block the entirety of the other colors and this is going to make it glow 
a lot more and it's going to make uh, give it a this uh, bluish tint to the this black for the rest of the blacks which is on the the feet and on the gloves I'm going to use Eshin gray and also on the weapon and I'm going to do the same thing that we did for the cloak uh, try to do the all of the edges with this color and just try to cover all of your uh, highlights the places that most the glow the most when you see them under the light that reflect the light you can give them a little coat of this color and it's going to make them pop and it's going to make your model a little bit more three-dimensional And to finish up the rest of the blacks, I'm going to use Downstone. And with this color, I'm just going to pick the sharpest edges and the very uh, brightest parts on the highlights of the uh, blacks. And this is just going to be a very simple step and try to leave a little bit of the Eshin Gray on those areas showing behind to, to make a little transition of color. And uh, that's it. Once that's done, I'm going to use Ushapti Bone and with this color I'm going to paint uh, a highlight on the bone and also I'm going to highlight all of the yellow parts on this model. This is just a thin edge highlight on these areas and all of the uh, most prominent edges of the bone and yellow. Next I'm going to highlight the gold and for that I'm going to use Polished Gold from Vallejo Game Color. You can use Liberator Gold from Citadel if you'd like, but it's not the same. This color it's a lot more yellow and in between the yellow, gold and silver. And it's, uh, I think it's a very good balance where it's uh, the perfect color for me. Uh, the Liberator Gold looks a little bit more brownish silver and I don't, I don't like it that much. Or maybe that's the color that I bought initially. Maybe they changed the formula. I don't know. I haven't used it in a while. Uh, but this color I like a lot because it shines very nicely and it looks uh, in between in the perfect spot from silver and gold and it still looks yellow so I like it a lot. Next I'm going to highlight the gems and for that I'm going to use Wild Rider Red and I'm going to paint as an example I'm going to paint the, the big gem on the, on the belt. Uh, try to you do like a U shape like a like a moon shape on the bottom part of the gem that's going to make a, a start a transition of color that's going to give the illusion that is uh, being shined from above because if it's translucent the light is going to reflect it's going to reflect from the bottom if it goes through the, the gem and it's going to reflect from the bottom and it's a different way to highlight Next, I'm going to uh, reuse the Everland Sunset and with this color, I'm going to give an extreme highlight on the gem at the very bottom part of where we uh, painted the half U shape or moon shape on the bottom of the gem. This is going to give it a very fiery glow, fiery glow and it's, uh, also you can paint it on the very top of the square gem on the color and that's it. Next, to make the gem appear shiny, you can either use a coat of gloss varnish or you can just uh, uh, paint a little dot of white like I do and just uh, use the fine detail brush and uh, paint uh, the top left part of the gem and that's going to make it look like it's uh, shining. Next, I'm going to paint the effect uh, that this model has on the back of the cloak. It looks like a Harley Quinn pattern then that makes it look like it's coming through the wet way to the real space. For that, I'm going to start with Stegadon Scale Green and I'm going to stipple this color and do like dots in all of this area just to make it look like it's a magical kind of weird uh, effect. It is just a, literally just the painting dots in this area and uh, all over the the Harlequins and also if you don't want to do this you don't have to attach this part if you don't like it and you can just be done with this. Next I'm going to use Sotek Green and with this color I'm going to highlight the the effect. This one I'm going to use it uh, I'm going to stipple dots inside the bigger dots of Stegadon Scale Green just to make them look like they're glowing like they're magical uh, kind of uh, uh, lights and then on all of the edges of the Harlequins, I'm going to try to do, to do an edge highlight with this color. Next, I'm going to use the uh, Temple Guard Blue, and this is going to finish up the effect. 
I'm going to use this at the very corners of the Harlequins just to make them pop a lot, make them uh, look like very sharp on the edges. And I'm going to just do like V shapes on the sharpest edges of the Harlequins and uh, do as thin as a line as you can, leaving the both of the other colors showing behind. And this is gonna bring uh, these colors a lot, make them a lot brighter and make them pop. And this is the finished model. I think I had a lot of fun painting this model. It really doesn't have that many colors. You can go all the way and paint all of the effects and all of the highlights on all of the areas. And you're gonna need uh, some colors, but uh, I think you can get away with just good doing the base coats and washes and just a couple of highlights to make it stand out. Uh, but uh, it's uh, very easy to paint and it looks very mysterious, very nice. And I really like the effect of him coming out of the webway that he is on behind of the cloak and I had I overall had a lot of fun painting this model I'm going to also make a video on how I did the base although it's not that big of a deal many people ask me how I do the bases this one is a little bit special it looks nice so I'm going to do a second video on that and with that this is the end of the video thank you very much for watching I hope you found it entertaining and helpful and if you like it, please don't forget to like this video, comment on it, and subscribe to the channel to see more videos. And uh, leave any comments and suggestions that you have for other uh, coming tutorials or videos, and I will try to listen to them and I'll consider them. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed great! Thank you very much for supporting my channel, and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.